Het is 23 juli 1985 als Commodore de wereld laat kennis maken met de eerste Amiga. De Amiga 1000 kan zo gemakkelijk omgaan met graphics, audio en video dat de computer jaren voorliep op concurrenten. De Amiga 1000 wordt dan ook beschouwd als de eerste echte multimedia computer voor thuisgebruik. Het is het begin van een nieuw hoofdstuk in de computergeschiedenis. De Amiga 1000, you've never before or after seen that much stuff change in one new model. We had a true multitasking operating system. Most of the genres were kind of developed back then. I mean, you see it from the likes of Populous and Lemmings. The Amiga was brand new, uh, and, and what it could do, it was doing it itself. It had the four sample channels, and it was creating the music itself in real time. The Amiga can 30 years na dato nog op veel waardering rekenen. Dat blijkt ook op de Amiga Fandag, die ter gelegenheid van de verjaardag in Amsterdam wordt gehouden. Deelnemers nemen niet alleen de Amiga 1000, maar ook opvolgers als de Amiga 500 en 2000 mee, om oude tijden te doen herleven. Wat is eigenlijk de invloed geweest van de Amiga op de computerindustrie? Die vraag stellen we aan programmeurs en ontwikkelaars die aan de wieg hebben gestaan van de populaire homecomputer. We had a lot of influence in the beginning. Uh, a lot of the major computer companies recognized that what we were doing was the right way to do things. We had a true multitasking operating system. Back then it was unheard of. We were the first one to provide those kinds of capabilities for users. And it's, it's things like that that ended up driving the industry. So when you bought a Macintosh, um, there are certain things you did that it did. So there was a lot of stuff done in software. Like the SCSI bus, was connected kind of like memory. It was a chip, you talked to the chip, the chip was connected to the DTAC line, the, the ready chip on that. So if you were waiting for SCSI, you were basically sitting there doing nothing forever until SCSI responded. We did every time that in a system that um, Apple was using like a, a busy wait, like sitting there waiting for it, we probably had an interrupt or something like that. So the, you know, the CPU could be doing other things and as soon as it got its interrupt, Boom, it was there to take care of that problem and it would go away. Every, every time Apple used an interrupt, we probably had a DMA channel, which meant that the CPU didn't even have to be involved. And because of that, we got a lot more performance out of the same thing. And, but not only that, it was the hardware was designed specifically to be good for multitasking. Because if you tried to multitask on an old Mac, I mean, technically the processor can multitask, but if one program accessing a hard drive shuts the whole thing down, there's no point in trying to multitask. They throw around words like revolution all the time. That was the revolution. I, you know, I waited my whole career to see something as interesting as that. It never happened. It brought real color, not just 16 colors that every system had had before that. Nobody, nobody went backwards from that. Amiga moved forward, Apple, IBM, everybody went to color except Next. Next was one. Next was the one black and white computer that came out after, uh, after uh, Amiga. It brought a real big computer feel that you didn't get elsewhere. Um, you know, coprocessor, blitters, you know, you, so you look, at, you look at a lot of the stuff that was done, like autoconfig. There, every single successful expansion bus that came after the Amiga did something like that. Microsoft didn't support it very well, but the hardware was there to do exactly what we did to tell you what that card is. Video processing is another good one. We were the first real live ability to edit the video and, and to create full statements, full works of art along those lines. And, and these days it's, it's commonplace now because everyone recognizes the need to be able to process your own videos and, and to work with your own stuff on your own computer. But back then, again, this was revolutionary. No one was doing anything like that. And we set the tone in many ways that changed the industry and, and is still reflected today. I think most of the improvements that you see in the Macintosh came directly out of them recognizing that, that we had done them one better and that they needed to find a different way of thinking about their system in order to catch up with what the Amiga was already doing. Veel eigenschappen waar de Amiga om geroemd wordt, stonden oorspronkelijk helemaal niet op de tekentafel. 
investeerders wilden namelijk een killer gaming console zien, omdat daar begin jaren 80 bakken met geld mee werd verdiend. Hoewel de Amiga systemen alles kunnen zwaren, hebben ze ook op het gebied van games een belangrijke rol gespeeld, mede door de muziek en geluidseffecten. Voor veel populaire games was de Amiga de bakermat, zoals Lemmings en Alien Breed. Especially in sound design, uh, because before that it was just bleeps uh, and synthesized sounds, and the, the sound effects now could be full sampled sounds. And of course, the CPU power you had as well, you could manipulate them real time, you could make explosions that would, you could like put filter effects on so they could sound like they're in the distance or in the front. Um, and yeah, the possibilities seemed endless at the time. I think the, most of the genres were kind of developed back then. I mean, you see it from the likes of Populous and Lemmings and stuff. They, they all just kind of come through and we're just getting uh, evolutions of these game styles uh, throughout. Um, the developers of those days have kind of brought all the knowledge and understanding and are still, vast majority of them are still making games now. Um, I think the power that it had over the 8-bit stuff was, was just huge. Uh, the original 8-bit stuff, Commodore 64, had hardware sprites and, and character maps and it, it was still quite basic looking. With the Amiga you were always finding new ways to exploit the hardware. Some of the later stuff that came out was amazing. Um, there was a game called Battle Squadron that multiplexed sprites across the screen as well as down and uh, gave you extra playfields to play with. Um, the way you could use a blitter to interleave playfields and, and render um, more quickly some of the stuff you were able to do was just brilliant and I think it kind of died before folk were really pushing it to its absolute maximum. Uh, you go back to the ZX Spectrum, the UK machine and the Commodore 64, they lived an awful lot longer so some of the hardware faults that people were exploiting were huge and I think we were just getting to that point with the Amiga so it kind of died a little bit too early for my liking. Up to date, I think Lemmings is still the one I, I still look back on because it was so simple. Um, GTA's obviously evolved into something much bigger. Um, it's gone in a direction I wouldn't have taken it. Uh, I, I'm definitely more of an arcade kind of guy. I, I grew up with arcades. So GTA with this big storyline that they tend to do it isn't really what I want. I think back then um, it, the Amiga was brand new uh, and, and what it could do, it was doing it itself. It had the four sample channels and it was creating the music itself real time. Um, whereas today you're just playing uh, like MP3s back. So you heard an Amiga tune, you thought, wow, how is it doing this? Um, or you hear a guitar sound on there and you think, whoa, somebody made a guitar sound on the Amiga. Um, like say now, yeah, you get an MP3, you expect it to be good because it can be anything. Um, it could be a live orchestra recorded or whatever. So uh, music's gone down the list a bit now. It's still very important for games, for us to match the style of music to the game. But the credits are normally way down the list, like below the tea lady at the bottom. <laughs> um, when the Amiga 1000 was produced, I was probably a little bit too young. My first one was the, 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 the Amiga 500. And I think w when the Amiga, uh, 1000 was around, the software wasn't really available, so um, in some ways um, it was, seemed a backward step from the Commodore 64 where you had all this control over the beautiful synthesized sounds that disappeared and there was no good software. Then a program ca came out called Sound Tracker um, with the Amiga 500 that allowed composers to uh, do exactly what they wanted with the samples, manipulate them, change the volume, change the pitches, make them stutter, um, and that was the big breakthrough, sound tracker. Het is maar goed dat de technici van Commodore van de Amiga 1000 een alles kunnen maakten. In 1983 ontstond er namelijk zo'n enorme overvloed aan games en consoles, dat de eerste grote recessie in de markt van videogames zich aandeed. De geldschieters, die een Amiga spelcomputer wilden, zaten met een probleem. When we started out, it was a game machine. And when we started talking with Commodore, it was a game machine. But then the recognition came that you had to do a bigger, more significant thing with the hardware. And, and we stepped up to the bad. The truth is that the hardware guys, well, all of us, we, we knew all along from the very beginning that we wanted to do something more than just make a game system. And so 
uh, the, you know, they, they had, for example, the hardware guys had designed in a port for an external hard disk right from the very beginning. Long before anyone thought you would need a hard disk, they, they put in the equipment for it, the, the connector for a keyboard. So if you wanted to add a keyboard to the system, a game system doesn't need a keyboard, but these guys had that vision and that was part of what lured me to the companies because I knew they wanted to do something bigger with them. Ondanks dat Amiga 1000 zijn tijd ver vooruit was, brak het apparaat geen verkooprecords. Met latere modellen als de 500, 2000 en 3000 braken betere tijden aan. Maar toch viel in 1994 het doek voor Commodore. Het faillissement was grotendeels te wijten aan een falend management- en marketingteam. Maar dat wil niet zeggen dat de ondergang met een beter management te voorkomen was geweest. We won in the early days at Commodore because we made custom chips. They also defined the system, and if I couldn't get new custom chips, it was a big problem, and it was a hard it was a hard problem to solve. You know, I you know I I put the A3000 together, or Greg Berlin and I put the A3000 together with a 32-bit bus that you know was sort of you know inspired by the 32-bit bus on the 2620 and the 2630, um, despite the fact we had a 16-bit chipset. You know, um, but we could do that, but we couldn't make it a better graphics system. Part of it was that we were trying to evolve the system with a very, very talented but very small team of engineers. And we didn't have a big budget, so we couldn't always make the chips we wanted. So yeah, at the end, the hardware was falling behind because we needed changes to the chips or we needed to get, be able to use somebody else's chips, is really the answer. It was a result of the bad management that that was the case. If we had been given, you know, if they were spending more developing engineering and developing our resources, then we would have been able to move much faster. I mean, AAA started in 1988. It should have been out the door in somewhere between 90 and 92. You know, it wasn't, we were only getting to prototypes in 93. The, the failure of the Amiga to be as successful as we hoped it would be, I think you can attribute it to a lot of reasons. About the only one that I, I can't really fault is, is the hardware. The hardware was rock solid, but the original operating system had a lot of flaws in it. And because of that, the Amiga uh, developed a reputation for being a system that crashes a lot and that gives a lot of frustration to its users. And so we get to take a lot of the responsibility on ourselves, the people that were in the system software group. But yeah, no, mostly it was marketing and advertising. They blew it. <laughs> they just, I still to this day am stunned at, at, the, at the miserable marketing and sales campaigns that, that people put together and, and, and how you, you think, how things might have been different if a different crew had been in charge and had been able to make the machine more popular in its first year. In de geschiedenis van de computer zijn vele fabrikanten en modellen gepasseerd, waarvan er sommige in de vergetelheid zijn geraakt. De Amiga heeft nog altijd een levende gezien. Het besturingssysteem wordt nog altijd doorontwikkeld. Er worden nog steeds games gespeeld, demo's gemaakt en fandagen georganiseerd. Bij sommige gebruikers sluimeren misschien frustraties over hoe het kon gebeuren dat Commodore ten onder ging, ondanks zijn technische voorsprong. Maar bij de meeste Amiga-fans overheerst na 30 jaar nog het enthousiasme dat ze erbij mochten zijn toen de computertechniek zo'n sprong voorwaarts maakte. Ja.